welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 4th, 2014, and let's get straight into our top story tonight. Feds treated Black Friday boycott as terrorist threat. Now, in a country where they run guns to Mexico and people are too busy to read their Benghazi emails, this is what uh, constitutes terrorism in the United States of America. This is a leaked email from Tom Wilkins. He serves as the executive director of the Intelligence Fusion Division Homeland Security Bureau. Let's see the specific known threats. They are as follows. Public protest. You can't have any First Amendment in the United States of America. Cutting up credit cards. Free. Non-commercial street parties. You can't have anything free in the land of the free. Sit-ins. Flash mobs. Alternative mass green transport activities. Zombie walks where they make fun of the people who are there at these strange hours to buy their goods. Disruptions in stores and also wildcat general strikes. That's where people, they go green and they say, I'm not going to use any power, use any fuel. Now, looking at this list, this seems like nothing more than just minor public nuisances, uh, something that would require possibly a citation. So with this list of you know, all these terroristic activities that they uh, came up with, this gentleman, Tom Wilkins, I just decided to come up with my own brief list. I'll limit it to three for the sake of time. Number one on my list is funding al-Qaeda. So, you know, you have uh, administration who says, yes, we have to fight al-Qaeda here at home. That's why you have these TSA checkpoints, these Viper teams, and all this stuff. But we'll fund them abroad. So, you know, they're our friend today, but tomorrow we have to go out there and fight them. So that's number one on my potential terror watch list. Number two, shooting targets of children. Now, if you go to any gun range, especially here in the state of Texas, and you go try to pin up a, a little picture of Susie Q or or Johnny B. Cute, I'm pretty sure the guys are going to toss you out and probably uh, beat you up in a parking lot. But if you're the Department of Homeland Security, that's all peachy keen. And if you call them and try to tell them about it, they don't have too much to say. And our last one for the sake of time, using military vehicles to police the United States of America. Now, it's always unsettling to me, that, I guess, when I was growing up. And you see, like, futuristic movies like Star Wars. And you think, how can you do this to your own people? You know, these, these big... Uh, corporations, these big uh, police state organizations that are out there inflicting this misery on their own people. But now, in the year 2014, you have these guys driving these MRAC trucks, uh, these mine-resistant vehicles, driving them around town, and the guy, uh, the SWAT team commander, he says, well, we need these because you have all these veterans returning, and they know how to make IEDs. Now, maybe there's a rash of IED attacks that I have no idea about, but uh, last time I checked, you don't really have a real threat of IEDs in the United States of America, but they're saying they need this, once again, pushing the narrative that the veterans are your enemy. So meanwhile, they have all these real terroristic activities going on, uh, such as, uh, you know, the Benghazi and all this other stuff going on, but they want to say that you're a potential terrorist if you go Black Friday shop or show up to heckle the Black Friday shoppers. It's completely ridiculous. And how do they track these trends? Now they have the Secret Service tracking what you do on Twitter, and they've been doing this, but now they're just ramping it up a little bit more. They're being a little bit more transparent. It says the United States Secret Service is set to purchase software that can track Twitter users in real time, prompting concerns that individuals could face greater harassment over tweets deemed to be threatening or anti-government. And it says they're seeking out the ability to detect sarcasm and heat maps that will show user trends. Now, it's very disheartening to me that an organization like the Secret Service, which is largely uh, not humorous, I mean, you know, they like to spend time with prostitutes, but I guess there's nothing funny about that. But they're saying they want to be able to detect sarcasm. Meanwhile, you guys may recall the Fox Brothers, the Fox Brothers, excuse me, the guys who do Conrad the Constitution, they got a visit from the Secret Service because they made an episode which was clearly satire, a joke, humor, whatever you want to call it, where Conrad goes to the future and he assassinates President Obama. Anybody who knows anything about history knows this is clearly pulled from the assassination of uh, President Lincoln. And they made a joke about it, and then they got a visit from the Secret Service. So if you have the Secret Service who can't tell what's a joke on a cartoon show with a walking, talking constitution, uh, you're going to expect these guys to know what's satire and funny on the internet. It's completely ridiculous to me. And it's just another way they want to track everything that you do, another way just to get you into the system. And another way to get you into the system, they'll say, instead of a war on poverty, they'll have a war on curfew so the police can bother you. And I didn't exactly rhyme, but you know where I'm going with that. Baltimore imposes daytime curfew on adolescents. And it says, we did this because that's just old school common sense, City Councilman Scott said. 
If you're going to ask young people to be up and ready for school at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, then they should not be out at 11 p.m. at night. Parents will be fined $500 if their child violates the curfew. Families may avoid paying the penalty if they attend government counseling. That's the kicker. We'll come back to that. And Kurt Nimmo goes on to point out the law will turn attention of the police on young people, many who are 14 to 16 years old. So now you have the police having, a, I don't necessarily want to call it a reason, but they have a rationale now to go after the young people, which means that you just have more fuel, more potential conflicts between the young people and the police. And people know I'm very critical of uh, police brutality. I know police have a very hard, very uh, thankless job, and there are plenty of good officers out there who just want to uh, police their neighborhoods and keep everybody safe. But now you have another reason to harass people and get these people into the systems. Oh, you're, you're out, and this is a daytime curfew. That's the completely ridiculous thing about it. So for whatever reason, you're walking around on the street during a school day, now you can get pulled over by uh, you know, John Law. Hey, where are you going? Why aren't you in school? Why aren't you this? Why aren't you that? It's like, I'm, I'm homeschooled or whatever your reason may be. Well, that's not good enough. Let's go, let's go down to the station. And the kicker on this, the, uh, the $500 fine that can be waived if you go to the government counseling. So this is what they want to do. You go to the government counseling center with the Obamacare approved doctor. He's going to say, uh, you and your child, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, do you have any firearms in your house? And does he beat you and all these other things? And, you know, you could be a good upstanding guy, but maybe your kid was just walking down the street on the wrong day. So now they get pulled over. Now you get pulled into this. It's going to go from this to CPS showing up at your house and trying to take your kids away. You say, oh, that's sensational. That would never happen. I've done the reports about the lady up north. She was, uh, she was refusing to vaccinate her daughter. So the SWAT team comes and they say she was shooting off guns like Yosemite Sam. As far as I know, she was never doing that. That never uh, came to light. But, you know, that's what they do. They'll come send the SWAT team and CPS to come take your kids away if they don't like what you're doing. But you say, hey, that's sensational. That can never happen in the United States of America. Well, something I didn't expect to see in the United States of America, negotiating for terrorists. Now we have this article, Idaho hometown of newly freed soldier cancels planned celebration. And this is continuing the unhappy, uh, lukewarm welcome of one Sergeant Bergdahl. And for more on this, the reaction to Bergdahl, we have our very own Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. And welcome to the Obama distraction. I'm sorry to interrupt your coverage of the VA scandal, but people are starting to get tired of watching the Malaysian flight investigation. So the president's feelings are starting to get a little bit hurt due to the fact that his government run health care plan is not working out too good. So without further ado, I bring to you the Obama distraction, Bo Bergdahl. Bergdahl claimed he was nabbed when he fell behind on patrol, but his fellow soldiers say he simply walked off post. The military devoted weeks to searching for him, and now some in his battalion are claiming that at least six soldiers were killed during those missions. All right, we're gonna break down the video of the Bo Bergdahl release from the Taliban to American soldiers. As you can see, Bo sitting in the back of the Taliban vehicle. At this point, the Taliban guy telling him to not come back to Afghanistan. And I don't think he really means just him overall. I think he means it's a message to America, stay out, we don't want you here. Here we are, helicopter coming in. Taliban guys, RPGs on the mountain. But just remember too though, the government was saying when they found Bergdahl, he was in a very weakened state. Looks to me he's standing up on his own and he is walking away just fine. Notice that pat on the back from this op right here, making sure he doesn't have a vest on or anything like that. All right, he's walking up to the helicopter with these guys. Notice none of these guys are armed. The Taliban had the white flag up. Bo Bergdahl once again gets patted down Check, make sure he's got no weapons or anything that's threatening. And they're gonna put him in the helicopter and fly off. He was looking for someone who spoke English so he could talk to the Taliban. And when we heard that, it told us, okay, he's actively seeking out the Taliban. Over the next couple months, uh, all the attacks definitely were far more directed. Following his disappearance, ID started going off directly under the trucks. They are getting perfect hits every time. Their ambushes were very calculated, very methodical, like they knew what we were gonna do. What you just heard, Bo Bergdahl's former team leader say is in fact true. 
If you go to the WikiLeaks.org Afghan war files, you can actually read everything that happened that day, where they actually say that they found him actively seeking the Taliban. They heard chatter, and the Kuchi tribe picked him up asking for Taliban who spoke English. I mean, it's all right there. This is a big distraction from the VA, but it is a story worth covering. All right, so if you're tired of the uh, mainstream media mass distraction, make sure you tune into InfoWars and also go to prisonplanet.tv. And don't forget, your username and password can be shared with up to 10 people. Turn off that Time Warner cable box and tune in to real news. That's an order. And contributing to the growth of the alternative media, now we have this. Former CBS reporter agrees mainstream media manipulated, controlled by the establishment. And this is Miss Cheryl Atkinson, who served as a correspondent with CNN. If you can become savvy to this manipulation and sometimes outright propaganda, you can learn to recognize it and sort of filter through it, which I think helps people make up their own minds about what's really going on in the world. And that's exactly right. It's just like that movie, They Live. You know, you put the glasses on and now you can see the, the magazine with the sexy girl. It's really telling you, hey, you need to go cheat on your wife. Or you see the, uh, the billboard with the big shiny car and it's like, you need to consume. You need to give us your money. So we're the only thing that keeps you happy. You know, the mainstream media is the only thing. This consumerism, this, uh, you know, this indulgence is, that's the only thing that will keep you happy. Not your friends, not your family, not your relationship with God. Now I want to show you guys this. This poster we have here, a lot of times people will say, I heard something on CNN and then I read it again in Time Magazine. Well, you recognize Time Warner owns both CNN and Time Magazine. Or they'll say, you know, I heard it on Fox and then I read it in the Wall Street Journal. Where you can see Fox and Wall Street Journal both line up under the News Corporation and so on and so forth. You can do this all across the board. So this is why your media is so controlled because you have very few people controlling such large masses of information and then they try to make it relevant say well you heard it here and you heard it here well you just saw those guys are owned by the same people this is how they control you this is how they manipulate you this is how you get those talking points out on every major network so be aware of this just like miss atkinson said and you can break through the program and you can put on those they live goggles and our last story for the night in this segment full disclosure did government experiment on preemies hide the risk now this is a very uh, sad tale. This concerns the University of Alabama at Birmingham where uh, premature babies were born. So what happens is they approach these low income uh, single moms who have babies with birth defects. You know, somebody shows up and says, hey, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And they say we have this program affectionately labeled support where you can bring your child and get your support. I believe the actual term they said is standard of care to help you and your child in your low income situation. So the, the ladies, they sign their children up for these programs, but little did they know, or so they claim, that the true intent of this program was to test oxygen levels on the babies, on the premature babies. And as the article points out, too much oxygen can cause severe eye damage, and also too little oxygen can lead to brain damage and or death. And many of the children in these studies have now uh, adverse health effects. Many of the parents believe it's directly related to their lack of oxygen or being too, given too much oxygen. So whether it's DU with the troops, not giving the babies oxygen, it's just one giant government experiment. You say, that, well, that's sensational. Well, it's true. Go look it up for yourself, and you can find out these things for yourself. Now stay tuned because that's the end of this segment, but we'll have more. At the end of the show, Rob Dew will be talking to an advocate of industrial hemp. So you guys uh, who are interested in that, you can stick around and see that. And also, the anniversary of Tiananmen Square, I'll have a retrospective right after this break. But first, if you like this broadcast and you would like to see it continue, stop by prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there on prisonplanet.tv. So stay tuned after this break for more special reports.